Thank you for joining today and thank you for carving out the next 30 minutes or so for yourself and for your overall well-being. In this session, we're going to talk about something that I've always been interested in and something that is especially relevant at the moment as we find many of our regular routines disrupted. Disrupted by the impact of COVID-19 and the restrictions that many of us are under, but also disrupted by the recent move in the UK to British summertime and elsewhere in the world to daylight saving time and also disrupted by the growing concerns and anxieties that we have for our friends, for our families and about the future. So as a result of these disruptions, I know that some of us are struggling to adjust to a different pace for the day and are beginning to feel the impact of these disruptions on our sleep, upon our creativity, on our mental health, and across many other aspects of our lives. So in this session, I'm going to tell you a little bit about our natural biorhythms and how by listening to them, we can use them to support ourselves during this period of uncertainty and upheaval. We all want to support ourselves and our loved ones at this time. And starting with an understanding of our inbuilt biorhythms, it can actually be a great first step to not only support our physical and mental health, but also a step to being kinder to ourselves in the process. With understanding comes insight, and I'm hoping that from that insight will come some kindness and some empathy and compassion towards ourselves. In the current circumstances, many of us are finding our external cues have been thrown off. There is no train to catch, no school run to make, no gym class or swimming pool to get ready for. Added to that, we find ourselves in uncharted territory working from home and certainly not working from home in any conventional sense that we would have recognised. And we're juggling the needs and energy of others. Some of us are even geographically distant and removed from our loved ones. So in these circumstances, there's a danger that our whole rhythm or routine could be adrift or actually even be thrown into total disarray. With the commute off the table, how many of us are now lying in for longer and longer? And how many of us are going without a regular break for lunch and therefore grazing on snacks all day? And without the gym, how many of us are putting off our workouts until tomorrow or the day after or the day after that? If it's any reassurance, the truth is that we've only lived by the clock in this way, in this way that we recognise and in this way that we cling on to. We've only lived this way since the invention of the light bulb and since the Industrial Revolution. We all, each and every one of us, have another clock that our bodies and our minds understand far more intuitively. But unfortunately, modern life repeatedly makes us override it. So we have an opportunity, and I use the word opportunity guardedly. I know that some of us are facing um, some quite big challenges at the moment. However, we do have this slim opportunity over the next few days and the next few weeks to take the time to size up and interrogate our regular routines and consider what in those routines works for us, what in those routines serves us 
And what in those routines doesn't work for us, doesn't serve us? And by interrogating and sizing up these routines, we can then consider what small tweaks and changes that we individually can make that would then support and support our physical and mental health. We have an opportunity to observe and respect some of these natural rhythms and to individually serve our, to surf our own energy and to appreciate the energy and the rhythms of other people. So what actually are circadian rhythms? Circadian rhythms are physical, mental and behavioural changes that follow a 24-hour cycle. So they do closely follow a full day as we know it and recognise it. They have been widely observed in plants and animals. And of course, when I say animals, I'm including us as human beings. Rhythms present and reflected in our sleeping, feeding and digestion habits. Rhythms regulating our core body temperature, our brain wave activity, our hormone production, our cell regeneration and in many, many other biological activities. And though these are inbuilt rhythms, they are also finely attuned to respond to key external factors. And the most key external factor being their response to daylight and to darkness. To some extent, they also respond to social conditioning. So they've become in tune to our use of alarm clocks and other, um, other external factors. And as I said earlier, they're present in our sleeping patterns. It also means that they can be disrupted by our actions. So things like international travel when we suffer with jet lag. Or we can disrupt them by an exposure to certain types of light. And to reassure you that circadian rhythms are not just something that I've made up or some sort of fringe consideration, just a few years ago, the Nobel Prize for Physiology was awarded to three scientists putting circadian rhythms under the spotlight. OK, full disclosure, their initial work focused on fruit flies, but it was their discoveries that enabled other scientists to discover the circadian times that control our genes, impact our health, and even influence the best time for us to have medical treatments and interventions, namely the best times for us to have surgery. I love these two images. The one on the left captures the biorhythmic clock as understood in Indian medicine, in Ayurveda. And the image on the right is the image that the Nobel Committee released after the prize was, was awarded. Now, of course, there's not a one size fits all when it comes to our circadian rhythms. We all have our individual chronotype variants, or as it's known in Ayurveda, our individual dosha variants. And even these types can be impacted by our age. They can be impacted by the seasons. And most of us will find that we exist in some continuum between being larks or being owls. When you consider your own life, do you find that you sleep differently and need to sleep, different, sleep differently in the winter months than you do in the summer months? or find that your sleeping patterns have changed with age. Please do use um, either or both of these images. Use them as a tool to overlay um, over your own daily schedule. And the purpose of that exercise is to see which bits of your routine are fighting your natural cycle. 
whether that's your meal times or the times in the day that you choose to exercise or even, of course, your sleeping patterns. When recent research into circadian rhythms has even influenced the design of spacecraft environments so that they mimic the natural light-dark cycle, shouldn't we all personally, and I would even say with a duty of care for others, shouldn't we all be listening to the ticking of our body clocks? The fact is that living to our circadian times helps to boost our health, improve our performance, aid our productivity and fuel creativity. And of course, in these times of disruption and upheaval, to maintain our sense of mental well-being and equilibrium. When we disrupt these rhythms, we have increased health risks with greater disease risks identified in the brain, in the pancreas and within our stress systems. So therefore, it's no surprise that the links between mental health problems and our circadian clocks are perhaps the strongest of all. Depression is closely linked with chronic sleep disorders and changes in our circadian patterns can be the first symptom in other mental illnesses. The impact of circadian disruption can be seen most markedly in night shift workers, who of course are fa fighting these natural rhythms and, and routines. They as a group suffer significantly higher rates of all sorts of medical problems, from diabetes to heart disease. They even develop more psychiatric problems and they actually even have higher incidences of certain cancers. And let's be honest, even if some of us, many of us are not night shift workers, how often do we disrupt our circadian rhythms? How do we disrupt them out of choice? And how are they disrupted by circumstances outside of our control? What in modern life prevents us from living our lives to circadian times? let alone at this current time of unprecedented uncertainty and the restrictions that many of us are under. Of course, there are many answers as to why our circadian rhythms are disrupted. Our working hours, and especially if we're working across time zones, our family and social commitments, the fact that we often use gadgets late into the night or even at the moment how many of us feel the need to cling onto the rhythms of a few weeks ago cling on to our 24 7 lifestyle and how many of us are even fighting the need to change gear or fighting the opportunity to allow ourselves some sort of adjustment to a slightly different pace. I often say that for many people, the conventional working hours of nine to six may not be the best working pattern. But at the moment, I'd also say that neither is this drift from routine that many of us are currently facing. So, how can we listen to our body circadian clocks to support our mental health and our physical health and our mood and our equilibrium at the moment? Though it's great that some of us have an opportunity to sleep in a little as we now don't have to worry about a commute, Keeping to a consistent wake-up routine is critical to keeping our circadian rhythms in check. Keeping this consistent, keeping this time consistent even at weekends 
By waking up at different times, we are essentially repeatedly jet lagging our bodies. And losing external cues can make us feel a li little untethered. But as I said before, can we think of this as an opportunity? An opportunity to listen to and observe our body's needs. Think about when we eat. Are we eating because we're bored? Are we eating because the clock says midday? Or are we eating because we're genuinely hungry? The same with our sleep patterns. Are we binge watching TV until the early hours? Or are we giving ourselves the space um, to actually observe what our body needs and wants from us? As humans, we evolved in a tropical climate where, of course, there was a lot of natural sunlight. Our brains have evolved to expect a certain amount of sunlight. And this is why we can be so susceptible to changes in light. And this is also why in gloomier months, they can affect um, sleep patterns and mood. And this is something that I can attest to as I used to um, struggle with crippling seasonal affective disorder. And that now for many of us, especially if we're in areas where there are restrictions on, on our outside movement, if we are allowed one out once a day for exercise, can we make the most of this morning spring light? Morning light is the most crucial for setting our circadian rhythms. It's actually the best at synchronising our body clocks and getting us back in sync with the outside world. Essentially, morning light tells the brain and the rest of the body that it's now time to be awake and active. And just as it's important to be consistent with our wake-up times, it's important to observe that same consistency and respect for our meal times. How many of us use that jet lag hack that um, when we al arrive in a different time zone, we, tr we get our bodies back into sync by eating the most appropriate meal for the time zone that we're in? So even if we're craving dinner, if the time zone we're in says it's breakfast time, we will have breakfast. It resyncs our rhythms and tells our brain um, the time zone that, that we need, now need to be functioning in. Our daily circadian rhythm is not an optional extra. You don't get to choose whether you tap into it or not. It relates to our entire being and controls every function of our bodies. So if we're to be as healthy as possible to support our physical and mental health, it's crucial for us to understand this, to take the time to pause, to take the time um, to have breaks and to leave the space to listen to our bodies. When it's dark, we produce melatonin and this acts as a time signal to the body telling us that we should be sleeping. Just as that first bit of light in the morning is very effective at switching that melatonin off and telling us that we're ready to be active and awake. We have a special set of receptors in our eyes which communicate directly with the body clock in the brain. And this helps to regulate our sleep. I suppose it's as simple as if our body knows when the day is starting, it's easier for it to also know at which time it needs to start winding down and getting ready for sleep. And of course, sleeping well has the positive knock-on effect for giving us all a better shot at reducing anxiety levels and feeling a little bit more content and supporting our overall health. Sleep has a fundamental impact on our health and well-being and it's a critically important topic in its own right. 
But for this webinar, I'm just going to share a few sleep hygiene tips with you. So these are things that are within our control, things that each one of us can do and have control over that will actually impact our sleep and even the quality of our sleep. So look at this checklist and see out of those 10 points, um, if I did have to score you out of 10, what would you score today? And with a few small tweaks, what would you be scoring in a week's time or in a month's time? The simple fact is that listening and living to our body's circadian clocks will boost our health and our mood and keep us on an even keel. We are what we are. We're living creatures programmed by the 24 hour rotation of our planet. When we live in tune with the beat of our clocks, maintaining our health and equilibrium is more easily achieved. And I do believe with this insight, we will be kinder to ourselves in the process because we will understand some of the mechanics behind our actions. And I'd like to end with another wonderful sketch note from my friend Hayley Lewis. Today's session is not to put more onto your already full plates. It's to reassure you that with some kindness and some self-compassion, we'll get through the next few days and the next few weeks. So please, when you are feeling a little bit overwhelmed, refer to this sketch note and be kind to yourself. And of course, we're navigating this journey together. We share this experience together. So if there are additional topics that you would like us at Happy Maven to cover, please do let us know. And if there are things that you have found very useful over the last few weeks, please share those with us as well. Thank you very much for joining us and we hope to, that you will be joining us for future sessions. Thank you.